Okay, so we're going to set up the Sierpinski triangle here using a custom tool we made in the last video and then highlight different stages of the Sierpinski triangle in a way that would allow students to explore what's happening. So the first thing I'm going to do is create an equilateral triangle. Click my regular polygon tool and click on two points. Give it a third vertice. And then we have our equilateral triangle. Now as we go on, we could use our Sierpinski tool to create the steps of the triangle. So there's our first step. Now over here we have this nice tool which is the checkbox to show or hide objects. If I click there I'm going to write stage one. That's our first stage. And I'm just going to select the triangle we just created, polygon two, and that's Sierpinski, right, from BCA, from that triangle. And then I'm going to select segments D, E, and F. I'm ignoring the points because I'm going to hide all of those later. If I click apply and then go to my move tool over here, I can now see what that does. You see how it shows and removes that triangle. I can do the same thing with the next step. So what I can do now is select my tool again and create the next three triangles in the Sierpinski triangle. There they are. One, two, and three. Now for stage two we do the same thing except type stage two. Here from the list um, we are going to select the next three triangles, so three, four, and five, and then segments, let's just pay attention to the segments here, it'll become relevant later. We chose D, E, F, now I want H, I, J, K, L, M, N, P, and Q. So there you want to make a note that you might be able to write it down that that is segments up to segment Q is now included in these checkboxes. Because of course as we go further in the construction it becomes, it becomes difficult to keep track of all the triangles. So we know now that we have up and through segment Q. And we're going to go further now and have this large list to sort through, but if we remember that, and we remember that not only do we have up and through segment Q, we also have up and through polygon number 5, we know just now to select everything else, and you'll see what I mean. So for stage 3, it's slightly overwhelming, lots of things happening here, but if we scroll through, um, we'll go to the triangles first of all, that seems easiest to me. I'm going to grab all the triangles from 6 on because we have 1 through 5 already. So I'm just basically clicking those triangles. 6 and 7, 8 and 9. Okay. So we could be done there, but we are including segments. You could hide the segments. You don't really need them. But I'm going to sort through them with you. So what segments do we grab? So scrolling past the points, we start to see the segments. Now this looks a little confusing at first because it's segment A and then A1, so what's happening there? Well the way it's going to number is when it goes through the alphabet, it's going to start renumbering with letters and with subcategories, so A sub 1, A sub 2. What does that mean? Well that just means that if before we had up, to, up and through point Q, any, any letter with a subheading like A1 or A sub 2 must be one of the new points, right? So that's easy. We're going to grab all of the subpoints and that'll thin our list out a bunch. These are all the points we need now. Uh, segments, excuse me. These are, these are all the segments we need. So I'm just going to grab these and then go back and grab the remaining segments. Again, you can avoid this confusing step by just hiding the segments. You'll still see the triangles. But you can do this and it might be useful for certain questions that pop up. So I'm just going to run through that option for you. N, almost done, P, Q sub 1, R sub 1, you see how many points there are here, S sub 1, and T sub 1. And now we just go back, because now if we had up and through segment Q, we want to grab the remaining segments, R, S, and T. And now we scroll through really quick. Right, we knew we had those segments up and through Q. 
we don't, so we don't need any of these. We don't need triangles one through five, and the points we're not interested in. So click apply, and now test and hope we got it right because I've made many mistakes on this, and it looks good. So we do a quick test, and this is where I think you can see that you don't want these points in here. They just don't look nice. So what we do is we go to Control Command E, that's our object properties, and we can um, select a few things. For the Boolean values, that's just these stages right here. I'm going to click Fix checkbox. I don't want students moving those around. I don't even want to move them around. I want them to stay where they are. Um, and then I'm done with that. So for points now, I select all the points by just clicking Point. I don't have to go through them. And I don't want to show them, so I hide the objects. And now I think, I mean, you could go further with color and whatever, but let's just see the stages. Stage 1, Stage 2, and Stage 3. I guess you can imagine going further. Of course, with the way we're doing this, that might be really time-consuming. But anyway, that's the basic idea. I hope this helps. Thanks.